Well, welcome to Series 4 of Shropshire Business Live TV. We're back. I can't believe it's Series 4. New series, new cue cards, new jacket. We're going for it this time. Absolutely. This series, Chris. I can't believe Series 4. You know, when you think about it, we started SBL TV in that year during COVID to try and connect businesses. And thank you to everybody that has connected with us over the last three and a bit years. Our viewer figures happily have grown every series. Hopefully we can keep that going by delivering the kind of things that you want us to be talking about. Um, what have you been up to since last time we were so It's been a busy the... time, so we're continuing to develop Shropshire Live as the radio station. So we've got the website, which we launched in 2009. That's going fine. So we launched the radio in October. Um, so that's busy. And of course, you do your show on a, a Sunday afternoon, which is a great and, listen. And online listener figures are... We're up to 11,500 a month now, which is doing absolutely fantastic. So it's available online at shopshalive.com on our free mobile app, whether you've got an Android or an Apple iPhone, you can download it. And also, of course, on smart speakers as well. So just say, Alexa, enable Shropshire Live for the very first time, then Alexa plays Shropshire Live. So it's going well. So we're, we're pleased with that. So it's been a busy summer. We'll be getting out and about around the county. And you, you've been working on the latest Shropshire Business Magazine. Latest Shropshire Business Magazine out this month, all about artificial mm. intelligence, which actually is quite a terrifying thing for some journalists are very mm. worried about this. Absolutely. Because the idea that, you know, they may be put out of business. But we did a bit of a poll to say to the business community, how are you feeling about AI? Do you see it as an opportunity? Do you see it as a threat or is the jury still out? And yeah. three quarters of them say, yeah, we see it as an opportunity. Mm. We embrace it. We use it in the right way. So I think that's the key thing is it's using it in the right way. You know, at the moment, there is no technology out there that can create holograms of us. So yeah. I'm afraid for the rest of the series. So far, you're stuck with us. Now, we've been out and about, haven't we, in the last um, have. few weeks. And um, one of the places we went to was the Flax Mill in Shrewsbury, where BizFest was being held. And I remember the first BizFest yes. was at Reach Media's um, was, headquarters yeah. at Shrewsbury Business Park. Then there was a big event at Shrewsbury Town Football Club. Yep. Then it all, of course... The world went a bit yeah, bad. It did a bit. Um, and that's been back this month at the uh, Flax Mill, the Die House, in fact, where, uh, I mean, you had a stand as well, didn't yeah, you? Did, yeah, so we had so the you, you were well stand. branded. It was great. And it was such an atmosphere as well. So many people coming together. So we really enjoyed it. Should we take a look? Let's have a look what we got up to. Take a look at this. So here we are at the Flax Mill in Shrewsbury for BizFest and I'm here with one of the most important people of the day, Amelia Reg, who's doing all the Master of Ceremonies duties today, aren't you? Yeah, I'm pretending to be you today, Carl. A lot of fun. Having fun? Yeah, really good fun, really good fun. Talk to me a bit then about BizFest. How long has it been planned for and what's the vision and the aims and the objectives of today? Yeah, so we're bringing BizFest back for the first time this year after COVID. Um, we've been planning it for the last six months, really. Um, and the aim is to create a really cool place where businesses can come together, share insights, meet new partners, meet new suppliers, and also to hear from some awesome speakers as well. And actually selecting the speakers is one of the most difficult things, isn't it? But you've, you've pulled together a really, what's the word, eclectic mix? Yeah. Yeah, we like to think so. We've tried to create a nice range of people, range of businesses, different experiences with different stories to tell. Yeah. And nice that we can come outdoors and do a bit of uh, filming today because the rain is just about <laughs> holding off for us. Because a lot of people won't have been to the Flax Mill before, no. will they? Sin? No, and the Die House space this is the first one of the first big events held here. So we're really hoping that a lot of people that walk through the doors today, this will be their first time on site, which is super exciting. And you've got lots of local suppliers involved as well. Tell yeah. me a bit about some of those. Yeah, so we've got exhibitors around the edge of the room today, which is a whole host of local businesses from a load of different industries. Um, and then we have some great food and drink suppliers here today as well, including Wild Street Kitchen, Tipsy Tom's, Dry from the Wild Cop, and of course the Turnwood Cafe here at the Flaxman as well. I can smell the pizzas oh, over pizza. there now. <laughs> <laughs> smells good. <laughs> and, and one of the difficult things for an event like this is to work out what time to hold it, isn't it? But you're sort of covering the whole of the afternoon and then maybe a different clear until in the evening is that the idea yeah so we're going to run until about six o'clock in terms of speakers and then we've got some music afterwards some food some drinks we'll we'll go on as long as people stay around really <laughs> well you've got a busy day i better leave you to it haven't oh, I? thank you very much great to speak to you so as well as there being speakers and stands at Shropshire Biz Fest, there's the chance to have food and drink as well. Here with uh, Wild Kitchen, this is Zach. Hi Zach. Hello, nice to meet you. So tell me a little bit about Wild Kitchen then, Wild Street Kitchen I should say. So we're based in Shrewsbury and our concept is using wild produce basically. So a lot of venison, wild boar, uh, foraged mushrooms, wild garlic, all sorts. And we sort of turn it into fun street food, make it a bit more accessible. So we do venison burgers, venison steak, wild boar sausages. Today we're actually doing pizzas, so we've got lots of different toppings on those. I'm seeing the pizzas are, uh, are quite popular today. So do you do corporate events then? Do you do family events as well? Yes, we, to be honest, we'll do anything. We'll do any event. We've been doing a lot of corporates and weddings this year, actually. Uh, we go to food festivals, 
Uh, but yeah, we, we go all round, all round the Midlands. So it's been a busy summer for you, I guess. Yes, incredibly busy, yeah. Well, Zach, thank you for chatting to us today. Thank you very much. Let's go and find someone else to chat to, shall we? Well, joining me now is Chris Cart, Managing Director of Volvo Shoesbury. Chris, you're here today displaying some of your EV cars. Is this something that businesses are now taking up more of? Yeah, we're seeing more and more progression towards EV models. Um, I think most manufacturers are heading that direction. Volvo have a commitment to be fully electric by 2030. So we're working close with our customers to help them transfer from that, from a traditional route into an EV journey. And is it that something that in the past they maybe have been nervous of? But we're seeing more infrastructure as well, aren't we? More charging points now appearing around the county and country. Yeah. Has that made it easier? Well, that's the key thing, the infrastructure. Shropshire's been quite late to develop that infrastructure, but we're starting to see it. I think there's a charging station going in Oswestry and Telford very soon. Ourselves, we've, we've invested nearly a quarter of a million pounds in infrastructure around EV charging. So as customers become more comfortable with that, especially businesses and benefiting kind for their staff, yeah, we're starting to see more and more progression towards EV cars. And I know a lot of businesses, they're also installing at, at charge points now as well, which is a massive bonus, isn't it? Yeah, and of course, like anything in life, the more people that do it, the more it gets, it gets more, it's reasonable then for customers and, and businesses to commit to putting charges in at work because the cost is coming down five years ago it was far more expensive so we're now seeing it everybody getting in a position where they can really invest in EV. And the range is improving as well isn't it? Yeah we started with a range of sort of 120 miles we're now seeing ranges getting to 3, 350, um, next generations you know it won't be long before we're talking about 500 miles and uh, you know once you get past 300 it's a game changer. So what's the message then? If the business is maybe just thinking of it, come and have a chat with you guys? Yeah, the first thing to do is come and drive the vehicle, make sure it feels right for you. But yeah, come and have a chat. We've got guys who are fully trained now on EV and can talk to you about it all day long. Brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Pleasure. Great. Right, let's have a look and see who else we can find here. Two people who are taking a moment for refreshments. Yeah. Uh, tell us a bit about you, who you are, where you're from. Yeah, so my name's Sash. I work for Greenfield IT, so we're Shropshire's only IT recruitment business. Um, so we're just here networking, meeting people today. So you're not exhibiting, you just come to have a listen and yeah. meet a few paces, have you? Yeah, yeah, we do some of the recruitment for Reach, so we're just here sort of catching up with everyone and uh, having a bit of a chat. How much of your business is local then in Shropshire? Are you predominantly a local company? Then? Yeah, yeah, so Shropshire, the northwest, all around Chester, places like that. I'd say probably 50, 60% is Shropshire and then a little bit around the sort of surrounding areas as well. And what have you made of it all so far? Oh, it's been amazing, it's amazing. I've never been to the flax mill. So um, it's fantastic. We're just looking around, reading some of the signage and stuff. It's really, really good. They've done a great job with this, haven't they? It's to be fantastic. Fair. And thank goodness it's not raining. <laughs> it's that. thought about it, so it means we can come outside and have a nose around. Absolutely, it? yeah. No, it's been a great day. Great. Good to see you. Thanks yeah, very much. Thanks. I feel like Martin Brundle here on the Formula One pit stop. Shropshire Business Live TV here. You up for a chat? Of course. Excellent. Now, <laughs> you're branded already, but uh, introduce yourself. for the. Let's be formal about it. Hi, I'm, my name's Paul. I'm from Start Tech in Shrewsbury. And I'm Ian Groves, and I'm also from Start Tech. Are you exhibiting? Are you speaking? We are, are you exhibiting. Sorry, we are exhibiting. Yeah. Tell me a bit about the business to anybody that doesn't know. Okay, so we are, we're what you'd consider to be an IT support provider, but we do much more than that. We have a serious focus on cyber security. So we do the obvious, answer the phone, fix your problems, help you make technology work in your business, but we do it braced for this modern age of constant cyber threats. So that really is at the forefront of the way we work with our clients. Cyber Security Week coming up soon, isn't it? Isn't it next month? next month? Isn't it Cyber Security Month? Indeed, yeah. yeah I'm so. not a fan of Cyber Security Month. Sorry, I should just say. Should happen all year round. No point focusing on it for a month. It's a constant thing. Uh, but to be fair, it is, isn't it? At the moment, it's, I mean, everybody's talking about it. Uh, I think people are a lot more aware now than they used to be. So, and people are talking about it more. So. And from your point of view, are you sort of getting out and doing talks and networking and being invited to share your knowledge then? Uh, we ran an expo yesterday and we did exactly that. We invited some businesses along and we did, the whole event was based around cyber security. So yeah, we really are talking about it. Excellent. Well, I'll come back to you for Cyber Security Month then and we'll catch up, shall we? Absolutely. Excellent. Thank you very much. Nice to see you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Bill. Halls, the independent firm of estate agents, chartered surveyors, auctioneers and valuers, has strengthened two of its divisions by recruiting new graduate surveyors. 
Kate Oakes and Ellie Studley have joined the growing rural professional and commercial team at the company's headquarters in Shrewsbury, having recently graduated. Managing Director John Quinn said the company looked forward to Kate and Ellie contributing to the continued success and growth of the business. A scheme to take a Shropshire solar farm into community ownership offers an ideal opportunity for county businesses to make a long-term ethical investment. That's according to the society behind the offer. Community Benefits Society Shropshire and Telford Community Energy says its share offer for Twemlow's solar farm near Whitchurch gives companies the chance to demonstrate their environmental credentials, help generate vital funds for their local community and receive a targeted 6% return on their investment. And it's off to a great start with more than £150,000 already raised less than a month after the share offer was launched. Thermal insulation specialists from a Telford firm are working with a vital charity that supports more than a thousand community groups and schools by rescuing and redistributing surplus food. The team from Seymour Manufacturing International on Stafford Park has supplied its cold stop thermal curtains to the Felix Project, a charity organisation that's received royal approval with a visit from King Charles III. The curtains have been used in the charity's East London depot at Poplar for its large cold storage facility. Lots more still to come here on Shropshire Business Live TV. We'll be back after this break. I started looking into different routes after college, found out about apprenticeships and decided I wanted to kickstart my career straight away rather than waiting. I chose to do an apprenticeship because I, I like the idea of starting work straight away as soon as I could and then learning as well. It's good to, good to learn a trade, but then when you have the, the college course that goes with it, you get the extra knowledge that you, you wouldn't necessarily get if you're just, just working day to day on the job. Welcome back to Shropshire Business Live TV. Now I'm pleased to say that ACO are joining us on this new series. I'm going to be taking a look at some of the things they're up to. Carl Jones went along to the ACO building in Oswald Street recently. And rather than going into the building, him and Neil took a look around the outside of the building and what's going on and what ACO are doing within their land that they've got there. And one of the things they were doing was catching up with some chickens. We'll find out more during this. Now we've visited ACO on many occasions at Shropshire Business Live TV, but we're usually indoors. Neil Hooper, the Managing Director, has brought us outdoors today to take a look at the site, because I think, Neil, maybe some people don't quite realise what's happened on this side of the building. I know you interact a lot with local community, but we've got chickens, we've got gardeners, Patio, you tell me what's here. <laughs> yes, we have. We started off with the four years ago with a seven acre field, developed the building. Uh, which was opened in uh, November 2019 and we wanted the grounds to be representative of what we think about the environment, about sustainability, hence 4,000 odd shrubs, uh, 1,000 trees etc which you'll see as we wander around are, are, are all becoming a nice height, 6 to 12 feet etc and established and then uh, colleagues who are asked for their opinions on things very very regularly through an idea called the launch pad said well why don't we grow our own vegetables loads of school children come round why don't we have blasted chickens school children come round and they can see them so we've got so you haven't just chickens. picked one of these you've done them all <laughs> no, you we have. so we've got the vegetables here which uh, we've got the, 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 the summer camp all this week we normally get around four four and a half thousand school kids to the site indoors but it's brilliant to bring them outdoors where they can see vegetables being grown herbs etc and of course all the food also goes to Osnosh uh, the charity in Oswald Street that makes meals for people most in need and you've got I can see here we've got some butternut squash we've got well there's all sorts of radishes onions pumpkins, herbs, pumpkins you've forgotten the script already, I forgot I have yeah it's behind Pump, me I can't pumpkins see. radishes yeah. herbs coriander sage parsley what was yeah. what was this part of the site then when you took it on was it just brown fields yeah, scrub it was, just, it was it all grass it was just a green this was a big seven acre green field mm. and it was completely flat as well so all of the mounding that, that we'll see as well as the building of the building itself has all had to be landscaped. 
So, so are staff here encouraged as well to sort of take ownership for certain oh, they, areas they, they, yeah, of all of this? Yeah, co colleagues are completely in charge of this, in charge of cleaning out, feeding the chickens, watering them, making sure their facilities are completely acceptable. They've been here nearly two years now and they're all still very healthy, very much alive, so obviously really well looked after. And everything you see here, the greenhouse, the shed, this is all maintained only by colleagues. Nobody comes in and does it uh, for us. We get advice, Osnosh came and advised, us, of course they did but then on a day-to-day -day basis it's what we do it's all part of our community values well the chickens are very interested in what we're doing here with the cameras aren't they so should we go and have a look yeah. let's go let's go and meet the chickens come on now also here today is the high sheriff of shropshire mandy thorne good to see you it's lovely to see you i mean you wear various hats in terms of your connections with aco don't you i do but i think the, the main one and the reason i'm here today is very much to say thank you for the donation they've made the really generous donation to the high sheriff's fund which sits as part of the shropshire community foundation that fund and what they're doing it's I mean, it's testament of everything you can see around here their dedication and their commitment to the community but what for me is just so wonderful, their money that they have given to the High Sheriff's Fund is going to go towards creating a legacy of small grants to organisations working with young people to try and prevent young people falling into a life of crime. And as we've seen today, young people all around Absolutely. the site doing all sorts of things yeah. during the, the school holidays as they were as well. But tell me a bit there about the fund. How do you set that up? Is it Does every high sheriff have a slightly different fund or different rules and regulations That's for them? That's a really or? good um, question. So within Shropshire, we've not traditionally had a high sheriff's fund. But um, actually a predecessor of mine, Dean Harris, really came up with the idea. My immediate predecessor, Selena Graham, really um, focused on that and raised money towards a high sheriff's fund. So I very much wanted to put it within the new Shropshire Community Foundation. Selena is the chair of that. Dean's one of the trustees. It's a great opportunity. And to, to be able to use the generosity of Shropshire businesses, led by ACO, and people within Shropshire to put this High Sheriff's Fund together that then future High Sheriffs can top up and give grants to, to organisations that are working with young people. And from your point of view, seeing it, let's have a, let's have a little walk. You've met yeah. the chickens already, haven't I, you? The chickens are yeah. amazing. Um, from your point of view, actually having a Shropshire business of this size with this profile yeah. that wants to interact with the county, yeah. You don't take that for granted because a lot of companies, you know, maybe their management is many miles removed and they don't feel like they've got a connection, but far from it here. Well, it? I think, I mean, I think what ACO are doing is, is, is just market leading. It's fantastic. Actually, a lot of Shropshire businesses do have really good corporate social responsibility programmes. They do work very much in their community. I think what, we, what I, I'm hoping that we can do is give another outlet for these businesses to look at how to support particularly young people in Shropshire. We know that we need to keep more young people in the county. We know that we have issues with, with the right skills at the, in the right place. The High Sheriff's Fund funding work with young people can only help that. So yes, what ACO are doing now, I'm really hopeful that other Shropshire businesses will come in and support. Absolutely. Great to see you. It's lovely As to see ever, you. I'm going to go and say hello to the chickens. Please do. I will. Take care. We're going to talk about what's behind us in just a minute, but no, you're giving me access to all areas here, aren't you? The executive access to the chickens. <laughs> after you. Is it safe for me to open this? <laughs> come on then, let's go, no, and, say, go so and say hello. Go and say hello. After you. Hello, girls. What's the etiquette here then, Neil? Um, what do we just... Do you, know, do you know all their names? Don't, don't stop moving. <laughs> if you stop moving, they'll be on you. So all of these have been here for a couple of years, years now? now. So yes, nearly they, all of them lay every single day. Beautiful eggs, which again, colleagues utilise, give to us, Nosh. Uh, you can see the grounds that they've got compared to, there's <laughs> one on my foot, uh, <laughs> compared, <laughs> compared um, to what they would normally be. He's picking up my shoe. <laughs> Well, she's picking up my You've shoe. You've obviously got uh, better polish on your shoes <laughs> than I have on mine, by the look of it. To what they're, no <laughs> to what they're normally. No, what is, never filmed with children and, and, and live animals. Exactly. Yeah. Um, compared to what they would normally have, obviously, and, and battery farms, etc. So they have a great life. And the kids, they're picking my ankle. And the kids enjoy coming, <laughs> coming to see them. And, and, and actually, you know, in the same way as you talk about the vegetables being used for the local community, You've got to collect, you're collecting eggs then every day from here. Yeah, we are. We are. 12 eggs. So we're coming on the Monday after the weekend. You obviously get at least 24 eggs. There's, that's where they lay. There's their home that they go in. 
So it's all on a, on a timer, mm. so as soon as it gets dark, they wander in. It locks them in overnight, so they're safe. Mm. And then uh, they come out as soon as the door goes up, and they've got this, these grounds here. We feed them, as you can see over here, with water. They've got shade for all of the rain and the, the sun that we get intermittently, and they've got their own little shelter in here as well. They're very, very well behaved. Much they much better, better behaved than I expected them to. Apart the one having to go at my right foot permanently. because they know the boss is in here, don't they? <laughs> But no, it's great. It is great for the for the, it's it, it's great for the for the colleagues because they are a sense of fun and mm. conversation regularly, and also it's great for you know when the kids come, visitors come. It's 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 talking point. Is it? Is that my foot again? Can, can, we, can we move on? <laughs> no, no, no. I'm going to keep here a bit longer, Neil. I think. Can is you imagine when, when you first <laughs> you know decided you were moving and, and building your own bespoke factory here? I'm, I'm determined to keep you here as long as possible. I'm going to ask a really long question There's two now. Of them now. Um, did you imagine for a minute that you'd have chickens and vegetable patches and things? Was that always part of the vision when you first no, wanted to build? No, this no. Place, the, so? the, the vision was to first of all have a have a building to be proud of for the next 20, 30 years, and to have have an environmental landscape that we could enjoy and visitors could enjoy and obviously because we, we've got something we can do here because the size of it to create something that would be fitting for the environment. What has, what has transpired is the sheer volume of people that come, uh, visitors and with the community. <laughs> Ow! With the community. Um, it, it just made colleagues think, well, what more can we do? What can we do to make it more interesting? We're going to talk about the log cabin in a moment. But things like this, you know, what, what do we want from what do we want from work? Clearly success, it's important. Clearly giving a service because of the life safety we produce. Mm. But to have fun and to enjoy it, to come to work and feel part of something with our community values, our social values, things like this, it's just fun. How Absolutely. many other places are you going to today where Wait, around they're, they're working on my through. legs now. <laughs> now we can leave. Now they're going after me. <laughs> let's go and have a look at the uh, the next plot because this is the next project is just behind us here. It isn't is. It? So it is, let's yes. go and have a look out there. Okay. Goodbye, ladies. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> no lasting damage from the chicken pecking. Are we, are we all right? <laughs> Recovering. Uh, tell me about. So this is the next project here we've got behind us. Neil, what's going to be happening here? Well, when we when we. Uh, built our home at the, the end room, the four rooms that the, the, in the centre of excellence for training, education and, and the, the, obviously the theatre that we have. This end meeting room has got a mock-up of a living room, um, a kitchen and a bedroom. Mm. So we can show our alarms, our gateway, our environmental sensors, our connected home, internet of things technology, all encapsulated within the specific rooms. Mm. And it's okay, it serves a purpose, but not enough. We have four mobile units that go around the country. They're out three days a week, each of them, every single, every, every week. And they can show the alarms and in more technological um, advantages of what they actually do and the inf information you can get out of the sensors that we have now. But we didn't have anything that advanced actually within our home. Mm. So we're building a, well, a, a log cabin is going to be delivered to us here uh, shortly. These footings went in last week. You can see the size of it mm. and it's going to be a, a, a properly kitted out log cabin. So it'll have the bedroom, the shower and the toilet and then a very big open plan living because that's what a lot of people have in their homes these days. Mm. It's, a, it's a big footprint to be able to show the open living, dining, kitchen, living room. So we can show the alarms in situ. We can leave our products in there, extracting all of the data 24 hours. Mm. And every time we bring clients, we can take them in. So look, this, this is what we're picking up on humidity, on damp and mold, on obviously the heat alarms. It's back ground buildup of CO, if mm. there is any, of carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide for damp and humidity with the different sensors we have, mm. and show them the dashboard and show how we can use that yeah, yeah. to have a healthy life and a healthy home. And they've actually seen the property on which all those statistics are based, which gives them more of a context to what you're talking yeah, about, Absolutely, it? So, so. And, and also the, the building itself we can use because yeah. the living, dining, kitchen area, we're going to set it up for a meeting room for up to 12 people, mm. as well as having the settees and everything else in. So it's somewhere else where colleagues can come out. We've got the garden that, that we've seen, we've got the chickens, and we're going to have this as well. So it gets people out of the building during the normal working day mm. and to be able to come out into the grounds as well as people sitting here, which they do at lunchtime for lunch, etc. Mm. They can come and have meetings out here as well. So you see how it makes sense on from a business and a social level? Absolutely. Well, they, they should be intertwined, shouldn't yeah. they? Yeah. I mean, businesses these days, I mean, 
surely we want people to enjoy and have a massive opinion and a lot of input into what they do on a day-to-day -day basis mm. to be up to something to be enjoying things and coming out in fresh air the good Shropshire fresh air uh, hopefully when it's not raining as well what mm. better it yeah. doesn't feel like you're actually at work does it, it? and it just makes you feel better get some yeah. air in your lungs doesn't it yeah let's I mean this is we've so this is less than half the site we've walked around so far isn't yeah. it? let's go and have a look over here because there's loads more going on over this side isn't there go and have a look over here so over towards the back of the site now, looking back towards the, the main building here. What, what's this here then? Is, this, is there water in there? It, it was an attenuation pond, no. so it, it was supposed to be able to then feed the grounds from that pond. And in the, in the going through the autumn and the winter, it does fill up. But in the summer, because of all of the, the growth that's in there now, all of the planting that we put in, uh, the reeds, etc., they drain the water in the summer, then it comes back. But everything runs down into this point. You can see there's a mound behind it. You've obviously got the water, rainwater coming off the building, etc., which does... We don't really have to do any watering at all anywhere around the grounds, even the front. So, yeah, it's a, it's a really good site to catch water it from also, that perspective. It also looks like one of these areas where you get those sort of moss lands where you get all sorts of wildlife in here. I we do, we do. So. We, we get all sorts in here. The, but, I mean, the only thing, mean, I've seen hedgehogs, we obviously get squirrels, we get rabbits, uh, we will get the butterflies, we, we will get all sorts of wildlife and it's supposed to encourage it as well in the birds. We haven't seen, thank goodness, any foxes because of the chickens, mm -hmm. but the fence is built high enough so they couldn't get at them anyway. We don't see any foxes, but everything else is here. So not enough running a multi-million pound turnover business here. You've also got to think about fox security and wildlife management Absolutely. stewardship. Absolutely, where all, the chickens it? are, that's an orchard. So I was looking at the apples while we're over there. Some of them are coming, they're cooking apples. So some of them will be will be ready to take off. And again, we spread them around and people take them back with them. Hmm. What's so, looking a bit further forward then, what's the next plan? Are, is, are there other opportunities to do more things in this outside here? How do you balance the needs of the business and the space you need in the actual building? With the grounds you've got yeah, here? With, 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 because, of our, because of our turnover now, getting up towards a quarter of a billion, we're keeping around 30, 32 million pounds worth of stock. So the warehouse is operating now virtually at capacity. So we're actually looking at ways to increase our storage, but without affecting uh, the landscape. Because what we don't want to do is to just extend the warehouse, which would be easy to do. We've got plenty of land, but we don't affect what we've already got it would be a crime shame and it's not going to happen but it is inevitable at some stage that warehouse there will be extended it could go up it could come out the back we could build an arch we, we do have a large turning yard which we could extend into there and there's various sophisticated ways we we could handle that ev charging is also pressing we we currently have about 16 ev chargers we want to build that up to about 30 the whole fleet of aco homelink is hybrid with some electric only vehicles in there so we're going to require more charging as we move to that so that's going to cause some disruption which we're aware of but everything will be done and has to be done sympathetically mm. just because we have seven acres we're not just going to go rampaging around building stuff and destroying what we've got it's well, not going to happen particularly now you've got members of the local community whether it's schools or community groups that are used to coming here and getting to know what's here and yeah, the, the experience absolutely. they get here yeah, as well. And all, so. the, all the time, I mean, forget they just matter about the money, but all the time, you know, you, you got the Jez was here, one of our colleagues who's got all of his gear there, he was out, out here, it's a full-time job now, mm. tending to the grounds. He's been cutting back the wildflowers here, getting ready for the next season mm. and keeping everything sharp, having to mow the, the verges. Mm. So it's a full-time job really for two people during the summer and then just during the winter, he's permanently at it. So he's moved from operations into that role and colleagues will come and help him as well. Which is all helping team building in the office and yeah, people absolutely. in the different departments getting to know each other as well. Absolutely. Really, it, is, so. it is funny being sat in my office seeing colleagues walking out two at a time in sort of hazmat suits and wellies to go, to go and tackle the cleaning out of the chickens on a regular basis. It's, it's weekly at least. It is, it is, and you could see them chatting away, having a chuckle on the way. It's great. Absolutely. Well, it is, thank you for uh, inviting us. It is quite literally good to see Acre from a different perspective, to be honest. Thank and, you. Uh, and, and good luck with the construction project. We'll come and uh, revisit. And once you've trained the chickens properly not to nip at people's <laughs> ankles, I'll come back and see you again. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Cheers, Carl. Good to see you. Thanks.
A family-owned Shropshire firm has embarked on a new chapter with the addition of the sixth generation to the team. Tudor Griffiths Group, which has its head offices in Ellesmere and branches across the county, employs over 300 people trading out of 30 different locations. And now Managing Director Tudor Griffiths' sons, Harry and Oliver, have become the sixth generation of the family to join the firm, keeping that family tradition alive. Simply Interview, which specialises in transport and technical recruitment, has doubled the size of its client base in the last year. The brand is part of the DMOS People Recruitment Group, based in Shrewsbury. Two brothers, Alex and Sam Edwards, joined forces to overhaul the Simply Interview business in July last year and have increased their client base and the number of drivers who are out to work for them by 100%. A leading regional company with a national profile is seeking new premises within a 20-mile radius of Bridge North. Towler Shaw Roberts is leading the search for the established company, which has not yet been named. It's looking for a substantial property or site to preferably purchase. Towler Shaw Roberts' Martin Zaki said the company is seeking warehouse space of 40,000 square feet, or alternatively, a site of suitable acreage where a bespoke warehouse facility can be built. Welcome back to Shropshire Business Live TV. Here we are then, Series 4, Carl. Yes, thank you for joining us for our Series 4 uh, first episode. Now, we've already had one visit to BizFest at the Flax Mill in Shrewsbury, so I reckon it's time to go back there. Shall we, we see uh, who else was there and see if we can catch up with some of the headline speakers? Delighted to be joined now by Mark Wright, the guest speaker, the headline speaker. You've literally just arrived, haven't you? I've literally just arrived after charging my electric car three times to get to Shropshire. It's lovely to be here in Shrewsbury, my first time ever. And from what I've seen in there already, the number of businesses, the community around business, I can't wait to speak. Everybody will remember what happened to you on The Apprentice nearly 10 years ago, isn't it now that? So just tell us what you've been up to since. Uh, well, since The Apprentice, I've been working with Alan Sugar for over eight and a half years now. We just sold our business, Climb Online. It was the first Apprentice winner to sell our business successfully. Uh, so it's allowed me uh, a set of capital to go and invest in other businesses. So I'm here, one, yes, to be the headline speaker and teach people about digital marketing. But two, I'm on the lookout for my next venture. I'm looking for businesses all around the country that I can invest in and teach. I've learned from people like Alan Sugar. They've taught me great things about business and I'm looking to help and, and take that knowledge on to other business owners. I always remember you saying at the start of the process on The Apprentice, I'm somebody that knows where I'm going to be in a year, two years, five years, ten years. <laughs> Are you where you thought you'd be? I mean, that's incredible knowledge and research, by the way. To be honest, I've always been a visionary and I've always thought big. And where I stand here today, I'm further forward than I thought I would be. The last 10 years has been amazing. The Apprentice put steroids into my business journey, quite literally. Um, but it's been amazing. And, and if I can encourage any business owner out there, it's to dream big, it's to write your goals down, and it's to surround yourself with other great business people. And that's why we're all here today. And you're in a sector that's one of the fastest moving sectors out there at the moment, isn't it? How much of a challenge is it to keep on top of everything? Oh, it's, it's continual learning. I mean, with the induction of AI, what's going on at the moment like that, you've got cryptocurrency, you have all these things that are happening in our space. Marketing is ever growing and it's ever moving. So great marketeers have to be reading and watching everything that's happening to make sure we're at the forefront. But that's why I love this industry. Are, we, are you staying in Shropshire very long or is it a flying visit? I'm in and out, unfortunately. I've just I've finished speaking at another event out in East London and then I'm up to Shropshire, then I'm back to London. So uh, business never sleeps and nor do I at the moment, but that's why I love it. I was going to say, I guess you love that side of things. I mean, you've always been somebody that likes to be front and centre, haven't you, of whatever you're doing? So. Listen, I love what I'm doing. I like to be busy. I like to be meeting people and I like to be learning. And the good thing about this country, it is honestly the land of opportunity. I've been to so many places up and down the north of England, 
south of England and, and particularly in London as well where people are just hungry to grow their business and learn as much as possible and Shropshire is no different. I love being here. What do you find people want to chat to you about the most when you come to events like this? <laughs> uh, what's Alan Sugar like? Does he, you know, when the phone rings on The Apprentice, do you really have 20 minutes to get ready? And what are you up to now? So it's, look, the, the questions sort of change depending on where you are and the love for The Apprentice and the show. But listen, I've done a lot of things in my career, but that TV show changed absolutely everything. Go on then, what's Alan Sugar like? <laughs> he is as tough as nails and a hard worker, but he'll forever be my mentor. And if I could go back in time, I always think about I won 200 £250,000 for that show. If I could have the choice between £250,000 or his mentorship, I'd always take the mentorship because business is knowledge and the connections he made for me and the opportunities and doors that were open have got me stood here today as the most successful apprentice winner of all time. But you now obviously are driven to maybe do some of that and give that back to other people then. That's why you're here, isn't it, really? That's what we owe as entrepreneurs, to get successful ourselves. It's a lot like putting the oxygen mask on in a plane. Put your own on first, then help others do it. I'm here to help everyone get their oxygen mask on and take their business to the next level. Great to see you. Enjoy your flying visit to Shropshire. It's good to be with you. Thank you. Thank you. Three individual sensors, optical, heat and carbon monoxide combined in one alarm for the ultimate fire and CO response. Introducing the EI3030, the next evolution in home life safety. Maximizing coverage, whilst making installation simpler, easier and future-proof with the Easy Fit Base. The EI3030 multi-sensor fire and carbon monoxide alarm is available to order now. Safety first. Aiko first. Welcome back. Well, you join us now at Endor Fitness on Vanguard Way in Shrewsbury. I'm with Nick Jones and Graham Mills. Nick, the last time we spoke to you, we were on a golf course. You were getting ready to do your golfing challenge. How did that go? It was fantastic. Thanks, Chris. Uh, yeah, the reminder is the, the Prostate Cancer UK lapel badge. Uh, we completed it. We started 5 a.m. in the dark. Uh, first chance to try and find balls in the dark was interesting. Uh, and we actually finished at 7.20 p.m. at Condover. Uh, and we had a great round, uh, of lots of shots, over 1,400 shots between us, not just me. Uh, and we raised £3,200 for Prostate Cancer UK. That's brilliant going, is it, in terms of raising the money? Yeah. How are your legs at the end of the day, then? Not too bad. So Steve Oliver and I are the more mature members of the team and the two younger pups in their 30s were struggling right at the end. So I think we must be naturally fitter than them. Now, Graham, you're laughing at that. You're on the golf course quite a bit as well and very soon you're going to get even more time to be on the golf course. Why is that? Uh, why is that? Um, so, uh, I might be on a golf course, Chris, but some people um, comment on my golf that I don't play golf, I, I hack around. <laughs> um, yes, so the, the, the news uh, broke this month that um, uh, I've decided now is the time to have a rest from uh, paid work, so to speak. Um, I don't like and people that know me, um, I don't like the word retirement as such. Uh, and my, one of my sons has already commented, uh, we'll see what happens next, uh, or we'll believe it when we see it. So, um, so yes, it might give me more time to uh, spend on the golf course, as you say, Chris, and perhaps um, get a little bit better with my golf. Now you've had quite a long career, haven't you? I think it's 57 years in total. So you must have, you know, some real highlights from, from that time in the industry. Uh, in, indeed, yeah. Um, from the, the days where I was a, a paper boy, uh, my hands freezing to the handlebars on, on, on my bike. Um, I'm sure I had gloves, but they obviously weren't that effective. Um, to my time with Roberts Bakery in Northwich uh, on the, on the um, commercial vans, um, to John Steventon's in, in, in Middlewich as a laboratory assistant, would you believe it, for a couple of years. And then I, my career started in, in banking um, and I spent 39 and a half years with TSB and then Lloyds. Um, and for the last, um, then when I left uh, the bank June 2010, um, I worked with, with an accountant, then we'll work with Jake uh, at the team at um, 
uh, six forward, uh, and then eight and a half years with Nick. Uh, and in fact, sitting here today re reminds me of a photograph that we had taken in Nick's office at uh, Shrewsbury Business Park um, for the workplace, uh, uh, for marketing literature, for the workplace pension scheme uh, yeah. that, that, we, that we devised on a, on a clean sheet of paper. So yeah, it's, it's been a varied, a varied life. Um, I've met some wonderful people, gained a lifetime of experiences, and glad that uh, health has permitted me to um, support in the private sector continuing for the last, uh, what will it be, 13 years since I left the bank. So quite rewarding then, I guess, throughout the career. And you said you've done quite a few different things as well. You've ended up in the, in the financial industry, which is where you're ending, as you say, your paid career. Um, so, so looking back at that, how has that been in terms of helping people with what you're doing at the moment? Uh, OK, uh, I think um, I'll give you an example. When you join a committee outside of your paid employment and you say you're a banker, or you've worked for Lloyd's TSB or Lloyd's, um, you get pigeonholes, pigeonholed. So you've got you've got this wealth of financial knowledge and, and expertise, hopefully, that you can pass on. So I've got involved in in uh, things outside of, of work. Um, I support Shrewsbury Colleges Group, vice chair of governors and chair of finance. Um, I have for about the last 15 years raised money through the golf through my golf society. Uh, for Midlands Air Ambulance Charity and Nick and I have done some events outside of the Golf Society supporting that charity as well. Um, I support two smaller charities. I'm on the exec board of uh, Shrewsbury Business Chamber and, and I will continue with that for, for the foreseeable future. So I think, yes, a financial hat is very useful outside of, of paid employment. Well, listen, Graham, we wish you all the very best of luck with whatever you do outside of paid employment, whether it's on the golf course or elsewhere. So best wishes from all of us at SBL TV. Thank you so much. Um, I, I'm, I'm actually humbled by the comments that, I, that I've received since the news went public. Um, Chris, I was thinking this morning, you, you don't really know how valued you are um, in the business community and, and uh, wider afield until, until you decide to stop. Um, and then you, I say I've had some absolutely wonderful comments and I'm, and I'm so grateful for all those comments. So thank you very much. And thank you for the time today. You're more thank than you, welcome. I, and I guess, I'm not going to say replaces someone like Graham because you can't replace his knowledge and expertise, but you've got to look forward and I guess find someone who can do a similar role. Yeah, so you're right about replacing. Um, you know, we do something which is very personal, um, and Graham's a very personable guy. We knew all about the charitable stuff before, which is why he's fitted into the team so well and been such an integral part for, as he said, eight and a half, coming up nine years. Um, what we're going to do, because we've got 15, 16 advisors across the Midlands, um, each of us are going to be upskilled a little bit in what Graham was doing, um, and then be able to take on that. And we'll have one or two specialists within the advisor population. So, so we're not going to directly uh, replace the role. We can't replace Graham, but we're not going to replace the role. It's going to be more about having the skills so we can still offer what we've been offering before to clients. Um, but also, as, as Graham said, I'm reading the LinkedIn post and reading the heartfelt thanks for everybody who's helped over the years. It's, it's quite humbling, and it's great to... We, we've been a little part of the most recent part of that, but, you know, it's long-term consistently being a good guy, doing what you say you're going to do, being loyal and caring for others. And that's what we want for everybody, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So what is going on then in the world of financial uh, situation at the moment? Because we're hearing different things in the news about the state of the economy. Where are we at, Nick? You, you're always the guy to ask. <laughs> I'm always the guy to ask. There's always a little bit of chaos uh, just, just before or just after I've come on, isn't there? And I know now these are pre-recorded and they're going out at the end of the month. So uh, this week on Thursday is the next Bank of England uh, Monetary Policy Committee meeting, which we're expecting another interest rate rise. Uh, which could take the Bank of England rates to 5.5%. Uh, it's already expected, it's priced into markets. It won't be a surprise if it happens. It might be a surprise if it doesn't happen. Um, so that's one thing to bear in mind. If people have got a fixed rate mortgage or fixed rate loans, they're not too worried about it. When it comes to renewal time, that's when the pressure may well be on because repayments will definitely increase. And then you'll have to look at increasing the term of, of these arrangements um, to keep things affordable. 
Um, on the investment side of things, there's there's a lot going on in the world which is positive. You know, some companies are making really good money, and that's always the, the reason for spreading. We never try and pick one or two horses in the race. We would always spread and have horses in different races, so of different types of asset class. Uh, and that's still the, the, the plan, really. That's still the message. So unless anything's changed really significantly in your own place, there's not really a time to be too stressed about it. Some people are really struggling financially because their costs are, are exceeding their earnings uh, and their income, and that's always going to be a worry. For business owners, um, there are lots of pressures because of the wage demands of people, which is understandable because all your staff have got to pay more to live, um, and but the business can only pay so much, so something's got to give. Um, so we're dealing with a lot of uh, clients at the moment who are looking at an exit. Uh, it might be a retirement. It might, I shouldn't use that word. It might be choosing to do something other than work for money, spending your time on other things. Uh, and if you're a business owner, then that doesn't have to be all in one go. So it could be a big exit and a big sale. It could be that you phase and you get somebody else investing in the business that will take it on in the future. So maybe a three-year or a five-year deal to just sort of keep your hand in, keep the expertise used, uh, and then you can then move on. Uh, and, and then enjoy the rest of your days. But having a choice is brilliant. And some people, like Graham, I probably shouldn't say this, probably like Graham, want to work beyond the natural state retirement age, and that's absolutely perfect. You've got something to give and you're healthy and, and having a positive impact, why not do that? What we like to do is give people a choice. So if you can be 60 rather than 67, and, and then make that choice not to work for money, then fantastic. And there are so many good causes, like Graham's talking about, that will benefit from having the expertise and, and all of the knowledge on their side from someone who's still got so much to give. So it's, uh, it's all about doing what's right for you, having a plan, sticking with it. And as always, you and your colleagues are there for people to come and have a chat with if they need to. Absolutely, always, yeah, yeah. So we don't charge for an initial conversation and, and we could really just be a sounding board. Start with a blank piece of paper like we did with the workplace pension schemes in 2014 uh, yes. and, and then just create something and we can do that on a personal or a business front. Now we've got to talk about, we're not in your office space, we're not in the SBL TV studio, we're here at Endor Fitness, which is on Vanguard Way in Battlefield in Shrewsbury. This is somewhere that you are quite regularly, very early in the morning, six o'clock this morning, wasn't it? Yes, 6.45, I had a lion, yeah. So this is, this is my second visit today, yeah. So, so this is a great facility, it's much more than just a gym, it is somewhere that people come, and you, again, we talk about goals financially, if people have health and wellbeing goals, this is a great place to come and share those with Connor, I know you're talking to Connor shortly, but it's, I've been a member now for over three years, uh, and it's, it's got through some really tricky times. So with lockdowns, the gym was physically closed. We had Zooms that we could just adapt to uh, and, and still get your daily fix of, of energy, a bit of a boost of endorphins, and then get on with being positive at life throughout the rest of the day. So it's been really, been really important to me um, and the members now that are here. It's a thriving club. It's only relatively recently opened um, and relocated from just up the road, but I'll let Connor tell you more about that. Should we go and find him? Let's go and find Connor. So I'm here with Connor Bishop, the owner of Endor Fitness on Vanguard Way in Shrewsbury. So we were downstairs before, we've come up to the mezzanine level. Connor, you've got such a great location and facility here. Thanks, Chris. We've just moved. We're actually at the top of a storage building for the last four years. Um, so having an individual unit is a godsend. So when did you start the business? So we started the business about five years ago, this coming December. And how's it gone from those initial days to where you are here now? Um, to be honest, it's been incredible. We literally, like I said, started at the top of a storage building. When I first took over the space, it was just an empty floor, a couple of kettlebells. I remember one year, the first piece of equipment was actually a birthday present. <laughs> was it really? Yeah. So, so you were starting literally, you know, we've gone through COVID. How was that for you as a personal trainer? Yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty tough. I think the key has had that ability to adapt. So a couple of things is just switching quicker, you know, sooner rather than later. And obviously being a smaller facility, it was easier to just keep it going. We switched all of our members over to Zoom. It also helps that about 75% of our members continue to pay for membership, continue to keep training with us, even on an online setting. So you've got great facilities. Just explain to me a little bit what about people do when they come here to train with you. Okay, so our main focus is we run a group training program. Most people sign up because they generally struggle with the standard gym. They need a little bit more support, a little bit of accountability, a little bit of a community, if you like. Um, all sessions are structured. We have a structured timetable throughout the week, which is relatively flexible. All sessions are just 45 minutes. So you come in, get a great workout, and then you can crack on with your day. That sounds pretty good to me. If someone wants to find out more information, how can they do that? The best thing to do is either search Indoor Fitness, either on Google or Facebook, and then contact me from there. Brilliant. Connor, thank you for letting us film here today. It's been great to have a chat. Thank you, Chris.
Telford College has been shortlisted for a national award in recognition of the way it has turned its financial fortunes around. The college leadership team has been put forward for the Community Impact Prize at the National IFT Awards to be held in London next month. The competition showcases the very best in turnaround and transformation practices. Telford College was nominated by Barclays for the work it has done since the merger between TCAT and New College. An internationally renowned brand strategy specialist shared some of his top tips at a Shropshire Chamber of Commerce event yesterday. The Chamber's three network clubs, Telford, Shrewsbury and Oswald Street, joined forces to welcome Bruce McKinnon to a combined meeting at the Albright Hussey in Shrewsbury. Bruce founded specialist brand strategy practice, the Brand Arrow, in 2009 and has since delivered over 120 assignments in Europe and North America in a variety of sectors as well as becoming a best-selling author. And finally, if you'd like to be at the big tennis competition being held at the Shrewsbury Club next month, there's still time to get your hands on some free tickets. Shropshire Business Magazine has teamed up with the event sponsors Aaron and Partners and WR Partners to give away Access All Area passes for the ITF World Tennis Tour event. But you'll have to be quick as the closing date for entries is September the 30th. All the entry details are on the Shropshire Business website. That's all our business news on SBL TV for this month. You can get the latest anytime you want by going to the Shropshire Live or Shropshire Business websites. Award-winning news, views and analysis. That's what you get with Shropshire Business Magazine. We celebrate the county's successes. We get the inside stories from our innovators and entrepreneurs. And we cover the big talking points across all corners of the county. We're proud to have been named Midlands Magazine of the Year. And proud too to be a founding partner of Shropshire Business Live TV. Download the latest edition of our magazine from our website right now and drop us a line to find out how we could be putting your company's story into our headlines. Welcome back to Shropshire Business Live TV. I've come to Shire Hall in Shrewsbury now to meet a couple of the people from Shropshire HR, Claire Allen and Kate McDonald. Thank you for your time both. Now, you've had a bit of a relaunch, haven't you? We have, yes, Carl. Um Obviously, um, we've always offered a broad range of commercial training and development opportunities, but with COVID, we had to adapt what we were delivering. So this year, we've had a review and a refresh. We've worked with March's Growth Hub, so we've been working closely with them to identify sort of the challenges that local businesses are facing. So the, the relaunch is complete now and it's out there and everybody's seen it, have they? It started. It started uh, last week. We launched our first taster session, our first free taster session um, around recruitment and the challenges that employers are facing um, and the ways of getting around that. So our Master in the Art of Candidate Experience happened last week and we've got a full range of, sort of free tasters coming up. Next one is on the 31st of October. Um, coaching for success so helping managers to unlock lock employee potential and improve engagement we've then got uh, more free taster sessions coming up in January uh, around workforce planning and dealing with underperformance and having difficult conversations with staff so so this is a good time then Kate to be relaunching when you've got so much going on isn't it yes definitely I think for businesses um, it's quite like a difficult challenge in time. Nationally, there's lots of recruitment issues. There's lots going on within businesses around um, staff retention and challenges within leadership as well. So we're really looking at businesses to align their business needs doing diagnostics with them to enable them to get what they need for their businesses. And Shropshire HR can do that and we can really um, support them in a bespoke way. And we should say as well, shouldn't we, a lot of these things that you've mentioned already, it's all free available, isn't it, for the local business community? So, yeah, the tasters are free. So come along and try our sessions out. You know, if you like what you see, we do offer a full programme of paid events behind the scenes as well. And we also offer bespoke training to organisations. But, yeah, free one-hour sessions. And, and I know, I mean, you've been on SBL TV. You're a veteran of the programme, aren't you? <laughs> yeah. Last time you were on, we were talking about the fact that, you know, you guys are in a really good position to gauge how businesses are feeling out there at the moment you know what, what do you think the, the climate is like at the moment um i think there's lots of different challenges for businesses i think one is making sure that they've got the right skills in the right place at the right time and last time i was on we were talking about the apprenticeship levy transfer and developing staff and training them for business needs for now and for the future but i think for us as a local authority we've got 
lots of access to different data, to different information that can really enable us to inform what the challenges are out there in Shropshire on the ground to really make our service bespoke and like home to what businesses need as well. You're also involved, aren't you, in the Shropshire Leadership Conference, which yeah. uh, that's coming around again quicker than we think, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's approaching very quickly. I think we're going, oh God, we've got to get a lot of work done. But yeah, 16th of April, 2024, um, at Theatre 7, full day event, but we're going for a bit of a different vibe next year. This is our fourth leadership conference that we've done. The first one was in 2019. Um, we did a virtual one in 2020, and then we were back face-to-face -face last year with some brilliant speakers. We had Sir Clive Woodward, um, but that was a very much sitting down and listening conference. We're aware that businesses need to interact, speak, work together to solve some of these issues that they're facing in the community. So our conference next year will be much more interactive. When is it? 16th of April 2024 um, and we have got a couple of great keynote speakers lined up already. We've got Michael Heppel who is one of the top three speakers in the world. Um, he's a really renowned author as well and our theme for next year is around the future of leadership. So we're really focusing on technology, on well-being and on the future of leadership and that belief in potential in people which links yeah. back great to what we're doing as part of our Shropshire HR offer. When you say 2024, it makes it sound like it's miles away, doesn't it? But it's not, is it? No. Give us some of the key details then, Claire. Anybody that wants to know more about any of these things you've mentioned, where's the best place for them to go to find out more details? So ask uh, our email address is uh, shropshirehr at shropshire.gov.uk and our Twitter and Facebook handles are Shropshire HR. HR. You said it in unison. It's yeah. almost like you—it's almost like you've rebranded yourself. You're on yeah. message, and you know what's going yeah. on. Thank you for your time. It's great to see you as ever. Um, now, this is the first part of a two-parter on SBL TV involving Shropshire Council and some of the services they deliver. A little bit earlier this week, I was having a chat with Stuart Hartley, who is going to be delivering some innovation sessions, both virtually and in person, in conjunction with the March's Growth Hub. Here's what we chatted about. So Stuart, thank you very much for your time. Just tell us a little bit about how you've connected then with um, the team at Shropshire Council and what it is you're actually doing. So uh, we, we've been working with the, the, the Growth Hub, the Marches Growth Hub in Shropshire uh, to help and support businesses in the areas of kind of innovation. So what we're, what we're trying to do or what we're doing is to create a series of workshops designed to support new fast growing companies uh, to look at innovation in the broadest sense and give them some tools and techniques as to how they can use innovation in order to sustainably grow their business. And is this your this is your specialist subject then? What's your background? Uh, so I've been working with small businesses now for about the last 15 to 20 years, although that sounds that, that makes me sound dreadfully old. Uh, but I, I, I guess I've come from this world of small business and, and supporting them for such a long time. Uh, and I've learned quite a lot of lessons along the way in terms of how businesses can, can use innovation and utilize innovation uh, in order to take on some of the, the bigger names, the, the bigger businesses in the world. And some of the best, uh, the, some of the biggest household names now have used innovation in order to take on those, those larger incumbents within the industry. Do you think businesses understand what innovation actually is? That's a really good question and it's a really good point. It's one of the things, one of the reasons why we're introducing this session, these, these innovation sessions. I think there is a real common misconception around businesses understanding of innovation. Businesses often look at innovation as being the invention of new products or creating new things, physical things. But it's not. Innovation is much broader than that. Innovation is all about the implementation of ideas that eventually will benefit the business. Now, they can benefit the business via creating new products or new services where people look at. But actually, there's some great uh, examples of where businesses have changed the way they operate, uh, changed the way that they, they deliver the same product but deliver it in a different way. 
or change the way that they run internal systems for the benefit of the business. So it's not just about inventing new things. It's not just about products. It doesn't need to involve lots of money or big businesses or a hugely knowledgeable professors. Anyone can look at innovation. You often hear the phrase, don't you, that um, companies, if they stand still, they die. There's a whole idea that you've got to keep innovating, reinventing, whatever phrase you want to, to put to it. I mean, how crucial is it now that companies always consistently are looking to do things differently, to take it to the next level? What are the dangers of not doing that? Well, ab absolutely. It, it's really critical that businesses continually to look at the op uh, the innovation opportunities within their organization. The world is moving faster and faster and faster. And without meaning to, to sound a little bit geeky, we go from businesses creating a thing, a, a, perhaps a new pen or, or, or a, I, I don't know, a new pair of glasses, in order to try and get some form of competitive advantage over their, over their rivals. But what tends to happen then is that competitors just simply copy them or utilize that innovation as well. And then that then becomes the norm. If we look at the speed in which Samsung and Apple and all those well-known other uh, mobile phone companies are innovating, they're improving, they're constantly changing their model. And that's going faster and faster and faster. The time to create what what is what is competitive advantage is really really dramatically going if we take for example the the elements of just very briefly if we look at the amount of time it took the car to get to 50 million users worldwide it took 62 years fast forward a little bit and the the little debit card that we always used to use now we tend to use various pay systems took 12 years to get to 50, uh, 50 million users. The internet, the reason we're all on here today, seven years to get to 50 million users. Let's fast forward a little bit. YouTube took four, Facebook took three, Twitter took two, all to get to 50 million users. Whereas ChatGPT, that well-known AI system, took just two months to get to 100 million users the world is going faster and faster and faster and if businesses don't innovate don't look at implementing new ideas i'm sorry but they will die uh, we've seen time and time again that well-known household businesses have gone under simply because they haven't kept up with the modern world they haven't kept up with their innovation and so you've delivered some sessions. I know you're delivering these virtually, aren't you, Stuart? And, and some of them you've done already. I think the next one's on October the 4th. Just very quickly, give us an idea of some of the topics, specific topics that you're going to be looking at over the next few sessions that you're doing. Yeah, so we've got a series of, of workshops, uh, some online, some face-to-face. -face. So as you've mentioned quite nicely, Carl, thank you. The, the fourth of, of how we can get those new ideas, where we get those new ideas from. And most importantly, how we can sieve them to ensure that we're only going ahead with the right one, the most validated one. The good thing about creativity and ide ideation, which is now what we call it, is that it's free. The only risk is when we implement them, that element of innovation. So what we want to try and encourage people to do in the, in, in, in the next session is to look at the elements of creating new ideas, but making sure that we can go ahead with only the right ideas. We've then got uh, from garage to glory, which is an element of new product, how to develop new product ideas, chronologically going through some important steps to ensure, again, we're decreasing the risk of innovation. Uh, we've got a face-to-face, -face, we've got a full day face-to-face -face at the University Centre in Shrewsbury. Uh, which looks at how to learn and innovate your business model. Now, this is the this is the new element of, I guess, innovation, which is where we're not changing the product, 
we're not changing the service, but we're changing the way that the business operates in order to get that service or that product to the customer in the best possible way. Some great examples of that are things like Netflix, where they took, uh, where they put effectively Blockbuster out of business, not because they've changed the product, we're all still watching films, but simply the way that they deliver that product uh, to, to the end customer. Then we've got an, an uh, quite an exciting one around marketing, how we innovate and change the way that we can market our product. All sorts of technology have allowed us to look at different ways in which we can market and, and new and innovative ways. And then the final one is, is really to look at evaluating innovation. So how can we ensure what we're doing has been right, has been correct? How do we ensure that we keep evolving that model uh, and, and learning from it? It becomes an iterative process that's embedded within an organisation. Excellent. Well, I look forward to hearing what comes out of all of that. I mean, you can go up in so many different directions. It's great. I know, sure, what people are going to be thinking is, how do we find out more? And I know the answer is March's Growth Hub website invest in Shropshire website and as we say October the 4th is the next one starting at 9 30. Thank you so much for your time and I look forward to chatting to you again and seeing you in Shropshire. Yeah absolutely thank you Carl thank you for the opportunity uh, it's been great talking to you. Shall we have one more visit to BizFest before we, should, we leave? I yeah. think we should now. Of course, lots. We've talked about guest speakers, we've met the organisers, but let's have a look at some of the companies that were out there exhibiting. So here we are at Shropshire BizFest. We're just taking a little bit of a walk around, and uh, here's Julie Bates from Peony. Hi, Julie. Hi, lovely to see you. It's so, amazing. how are things going for you? You know, it's doing. We're doing really, really well. We're back on QVC, um, which is the shopping channel. Um, I haven't quite gone back to TVSN yet, all the way to Australia, but that is happening next year, which is going to be really exciting. But what's really good was I met up with a wonderful girl, um, Jade. So hi, Jade. How are you? Are you okay? Yeah, very well, thank you. How good, are you? Good. So Jade is from Shropshire Events, and we have teamed up to do this amazing corporate hire, which is hiring beautiful faux flowers, peony, um, to put into offices, um, surgeries, doctor surgeries. And we are also doing an incredible wedding hire where you can have the most beautiful flowers that look like they're fresh flowers from the garden for your wedding, for your special day. So you are very, very busy and lots going on. If someone wants to find out more information, how can they do that? You can go online. We have an amazing website, peony.co.uk, which um, is also, we have a shop on the estate, which is the Ruckley Estate just outside Chiffnell. It's a huge, huge shop. And you can come and we can do your flowers for you, make amazing arrangements. Um, so do hop along there just outside Chiffnell. Brilliant. Thank you, Julie. Right then, let's meet some of the exhibitors, shall we? Who have we got here? Introduce yourself, sir. Uh, I'm Marcus Clapton, uh, Director of New Era Printing, and uh, we're based on Battlefield Enterprise Park. And why are you here today then? Is it for the networking, is it for the speakers, or is it a bit of both? Uh, well, basically, um, just basically networking. Uh, we've dealt with uh, people at Reach, and Dina especially, for many years. So uh, we decided to come down. Uh, we've done all the printing for the show today. Uh, very last minute, some of it, which is a bit close to the close to the wire. But uh, yeah, we just thought we'd come and uh, show what we can actually do, and hopefully make a new con few new contacts. So you knew exactly what the lineup was, and if you'd done the printing of the program, exactly, of course. Good to see you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. Let's see if we've got some friends over here that will talk to us. Now, now I know you you people are not camera shy, are you? Would you like to say hello? to the good people of Shropshire Business Live TV. Helen Knight from Lingen Davis, you've already done your speaker slot, haven't you? So is the pressure off? Oh, how nice was it to go on at 2.30 and, and like hit off? I was like, yes, best best for me, you know, to get on and get on with it. It was really good though, I really enjoyed it. How do you decide how to pitch it? Because you don't always know what kind of audience you're going to get for something like this. Do you? <laughs> I've just said here now uh, to my colleague from New Era, I, uh, I've done very little prep. Um, that's naughty, isn't it? 
Um, so I speaking been, from the heart. Then, that's uh, well, yeah. Sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's good to not be too scripted. Um, and I'm good with that sort of environment. But CSR. Um, it's something that I know about a lot. It's something that I do on a daily basis. So if you're talking about a subject that you know, then you feel confident talking about it, don't you? How many businesses do you know in here today and how many are you introducing yourself to then? Well, uh, there's quite a few businesses I know, but there's a, quite a few people that I've met. just met a chap from Shoot Hill, for example. I've never met him before. Um, I've met Sales Geek from... I hadn't met um, Pippa before. So um, new businesses here today and existing. So nice to see people, but also nice to see some new people. So far, so good then, yeah? Very, very good. Great turnout. Lovely venue. Amazing. Yeah, great. Fabulous. I'll leave you to it. Nice to see you. Thanks, Carl. Thank you. Well, I've just caught up now with Rachel and Kelly from Shropshire Chamber of Commerce. How's it going, Rachel? Really good. It's really busy, isn't it? It's a great environment. Great to see so many businesses here in sunny Shropshire. Or well, not so much today. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, after all the sunshine, we've got a bit of rain. Kelly, you've got your own events coming up soon. Tell me about, first of all, you've got the Chamber Expo, haven't you? That's coming up soon. Yes, we've got the Expo on the 11th of October at Shrewsbury Town Football Club. Really looking forward to that. We've got quite a few exhibitors signed up already and we will be showcasing our new speed, working network, speed networking, which is all Safari themed, so really excited about that too. Yeah, that sounds quite exciting. And as well as that, all your three networking clubs from Shrewsbury, Oswestry and Telford, they're getting together, aren't they? Tell me a little bit about that event you've got taking place, which I think is in Shrewsbury, isn't it? Yeah, we wanted to combine all the network clubs so it gives the opportunity for everybody from Oswestry, Street, Telford, Shrewsbury just to come together, make new connections and meet the people they wouldn't get to meet with every month on a regular basis. So for that one then, and for the Expo, people can find out more on the Shropshire Chamber website? Yeah, jump onto the website, give us a call, drop us an email, we'll give you all dates, details, we can book you on. We look forward to seeing everybody there. Brilliant. Well, thank you, Kelly. Thank you, Rachel. I'll let you carry on with the uh, networking. Thank you. Entertainment for Shropshire. And that's it. That's a wrap from our first episode of our fourth series. Thank you to everybody who's contributed to all our guests and great fun we've had at BizFest as well this month. Don't forget, if there's something you think we should be talking about on this show, get in touch with us. All the details are available, aren't they, through they our are, website, Chris? Yeah, sbltv.co.uk or just email us, info at sbltv.co.uk as well. It's always nice to hear from you. And remember, of course, you can catch up on anything you've missed. You can binge the whole series box sets if you want on our website or also on our YouTube channel. Check that out as well it's all about connecting with businesses and us talking about the things you want to know about really and talking of which of course don't forget we also alongside Shropshire Business Live TV have something called SBL TV knowledge we tell do. them all about it yes Chris. so sbltvknowledge.co.uk is the place to go to uh, for uh, business advice and uh, also if you're a business person you maybe have got some advice you want to give out to the business community we're always looking for either written text or audio or even create a video just using your uh, mobile phone and and send it to us on sbltvknowledge.co.uk. It's kind of a portal, isn't it, of, yeah. of everything business in Shropshire. Not going to cost you a penny. We just want to help share some good news and good advice. And really, it's audio and video which mm. sets it apart. Those are, the, those are the bits of content that really do well, don't they? So, yeah, so we'd love to hear from you. And talking of video, we will end today by taking one last trip back to BizFest for our 90 seconds with Hot Seat. Now, if you haven't seen this before, at the end of each show, we try to get somebody in, in, in a bit of a pressure situation where we ask some quick fire questions to find out a bit about their career and their life. So uh, we'll see you next month and we'll leave you with our uh, first victim of the series, Laura Scotland at BizFest. Your greatest strength in the workplace. Um, my greatest strength is um, 
I would say I'm creative and resilient and tenacious. Qualities that you look for in colleagues? Um, it's really nice to have colleagues that um, have fun and a sense of humour, um, that are reliable, um, honest and um, have shared values. Tell us something about you that most people probably wouldn't know. Um, I can't tell my left from my right. <laughs> Embarrassing, I know. Favourite social media platforms? Ooh, um, I mean, I'm not a massive fan of social media. I have to do it for work, but um, if I had to choose, it would be Instagram. Early bird or night owl? Early bird. Gym workout or TV box set? Oh, t TV box set, definitely. And any recommendations, very welcome. Favourite music and movies? Um, music I love is one of my passions, so I've got very eclectic taste in music. Um, I enjoy classical music, I enjoy house music, um, Motown, um, but live music is probably the best. Um, films, again, I really love films. Um, anything by Scorsese. Um, if I had to pick a favourite film, maybe American Gang Gangster. And final question, most importantly, is it Shrewsbury or Shrewsbury? Ooh, it's, it is Shrewsbury, phonetically it's Shrewsbury and I'd, it's Shrewsbury to me I'm afraid, sorry.